Please pray with me. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When the way before you seems impossible. Have you ever found yourself driving down a road and then, bam, right in front of you, you see what you see before you just makes you go, there's just no way. When I think about my travels over the years, three different scenarios come to mind. First, driving in Haiti. The potholes and the ruts in the road are just impossible, impassable. And on every turn, I think, if we drive down that road, there is no way, there is no way that car is going to survive. One good bump and that transmission's going to go out for sure. There's no way. And then I think about Cairo, Egypt. That's a typical day. Traffic can be, the traffic jams can be like 10 lanes deep. The road, the, the traffic is so slow, it's like a parking lot. How our drivers were able to get us anywhere through the city is beyond me. Drive through the heart of downtown and get us where we need to go in 30 minutes? I just don't know how that's going to happen. There's just no way. And then this spring, Kaki and I were able to travel to Ireland with some friends, and Kaki's maiden name is Connor. And so we had heard about Connor Pass in County Kerry, where her family came from. So we had to go to Connor Pass and check it out. We had no idea what the road would be like. Ireland is known for its narrow one-way lanes. There were so many times on this trip where we felt like we could just roll down the windows and put our hands out on both sides and touch the walls at the same time or touch the hedges at the same time. And time and time again, it seemed like there was absolutely no place anywhere for us to turn aside if a car starts coming our way. But then we went to Connor Pass, and it took us to a whole new level. We could fall off a cliff, too. And so, so many times, we found ourselves saying, there is just no way. Well, the Israelites found themselves saying the same thing. Two weeks ago, we talked about God sending the ten plagues upon Egypt. Last week, we talked about Passover, where they sacrificed the lambs, put the blood over the doors, where God passed through but spared the people of Israel. And Pharaoh finally said, I'll let them go. They can go. They were free, free to go and worship God out in the wilderness, free to go and settle in the promised land. They were finally free. But were they really you can feel the tension right at the beginning of our reading today. Would you remember the first words of the, of the scripture reading today? As Pharaoh approached. Wait, what? What's he doing there? I thought they were free. I thought he was letting them go. Now he's back. Is he trying to get them back into slavery? Is he trying to just annihilate them all together? What's going on? With Pharaoh and his army advancing behind them and this giant sea in front of them, the Israelites just could see no way forward. All they could think is, there is just no way. There is no way we are coming out of this alive. There is no way we're going to be free. No way. Maybe you don't have Pharaoh's army coming up behind you. But my guess is that there is something in your life that is keeping you from freely living out the life that God has intended for you. Just like God delivered the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, so Jesus came and delivered us from slavery over sin and death. That's the heart of the good news, freedom. Jesus died for our freedom. Jesus rose again for our freedom. Jesus reigns in heaven right now and is praying for our freedom. Did you know that, that Jesus is praying for you? Jesus is praying for each of you right now. It says in Romans 8, Christ is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. That is, he is praying for us. And part of what he's praying about is your freedom. To freely live out the life that God has intended for you. A verse we've been quoting throughout this series is from Galatians 5.1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. 
There are things in our lives that threaten to bring us back into slavery, back into bondage, to keep us from freely living out that life that God has intended for us. The promise of a life in Christ sounds amazing and wonderful. To live in joy and peace, to live with love and compassion, to live with forgiveness and purpose, a life in relationship with the Lord where we grow in our faith and grow in our intimacy with God, a life of experiencing God active in our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. And it all begins with faith, entering into a relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. But even after coming to faith, our lives don't always match up with that ideal, do they? Why is that? Well, it's because we still live in a broken world. It's because there are still parts of our lives that are in bondage. And it's because there is still one who wants to keep us from living the life that Christ has won for us. Call him what you want, the adversary, the evil one, devil, Satan, whatever. But he's a lot like Pharaoh. Pharaoh was defeated. God sent the 10 plagues and Pharaoh gave in. God had the victory, but Pharaoh still tried to do what he could to thwart God's plan and keep the Israelites from living in freedom. For us, the evil one was defeated through Christ's death and resurrection, and yet he is still trying to do what he can to keep us from freely and fully living into the abundant life of Christ. 1 Peter 5.8 says, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a lion, roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. So what keeps you from freely living your life in Christ? In other words, what in your life keeps you from living in the new life that Christ offers and makes you want to remain in the old life that he came to deliver us from? In many ways, we are like the Israelites who want to just go back to life as usual in the land of slavery. Maybe it has something to do with your past. A past failure by which you are still uh, defining yourself. Or bad ways of thinking from the past that still affect your own sense of self-worth. Or bad habits or behaviors which you know aren't Christ-like, but they still come to the surface and rear their ugly head. Like selfishness, or materialism, or being judgmental, or losing your temper, or giving in to fear. All these things can hinder our life in Christ. Like Pharaoh, the old life just keeps trying to advance upon us from behind and threatens to undo us and pull us back into old ways of living and thinking. Or maybe what threatens your life in Christ has more to do about your immediate circumstances. Maybe it feels more like Pharaoh's army has already arrived. And you are in the midst of the battle right now. Maybe you're in an unhealthy relationship or a toxic work environment or some difficult or unbearable situation that you can't control. You are still fighting an addiction that you can't seem to shake off. Whatever it is, you feel stuck, trapped, and even like you're about to be defeated. Or maybe what threatens your freedom in Christ has more to do with your future. Like the sea that loomed before the Israelites. There is something in your life that is in the way that you feel is holding you back. You feel like you are being kept from being the person God created you to be. But the obstacles ahead of you are just so big. You are afraid that you will never be able to get past them. You know that you are meant to live into a bright future in Christ. But there are things in your life that make you say, yeah, but... The Israelites were told that they were free. And they replied, yeah, but we see that big sea in front of us. We are never going to walk into the promised land. Never. Yeah, but. Yeah, there is something God has called me to do in my life. But I am really busy. But I have a job. But I have a family. How will I ever find time to get into a Bible study to grow in my faith? 
How will I ever find the time to get involved in a regular ministry where I can use my gifts to impact others? Yeah, God wants me to take a leap of faith and to change direction with my life, but it's scary. Risk is involved. Yeah, God wants me to have an impact in the lives of others through sacrificial service, but I really like my life the way it is. Yeah, God can do anything. Yeah, I can live with joy and peace despite my circumstances, but I have a lot of debt I need to pay off first. But I have physical limitations, but I have problems, but I can only see the obstacles in front of me. How am I to live in joy and peace with those things around? Whatever it is, there is something in your life that is keeping you from living fully and freely in Christ. And you find yourself looking at the challenges and looking at the obstacles, the doubts and fears, and you can only think, there is just no way. Well, as we look at this story of God parting the seas and defeating Pharaoh's army, there are three directives that the Israelites are giving that we can apply to our own lives whenever we find ourselves stuck or trapped or facing an uphill battle or feel like there are insurmountable obstacles in front of us. First, stand firm. As soon as the Israelites saw the Egyptians coming, our reading says that they became terrified. It's almost unbelievable, if not comical, what they said to Moses. Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us out into the desert to die? Didn't we say to you, in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? Really? Life was better back in Egypt? You'd prefer slavery? But when we are stressed... When life is hard, when challenges face us, it can be so easy for us to panic like the Israelites. Challenges in life can be overwhelming and we can lose confidence and it's easy to fall back into old patterns, old ways of living that really don't satisfy or give us the abundant life that we so desire. And so Moses answers them, do not be afraid, stand firm. And you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. Don't panic. Don't go back. Hold ground. Stand firm. And you will see God's deliverance. And that deliverance will come most likely in unexpected ways. Who could have imagined the parting of the seas? Only God. Consider that God has a solution for your battle that you have never considered. So just lift up the battle to God and trust him to take care of it in his way. Those are the best types of prayers anyhow. Lord, I'm putting this all in your hands. I know that you know what is best and I trust you. I trust your wisdom. I trust your purpose. I trust your love. So here it is. Have your way. Second, trust that God is for you. So often we grow through life as if we have to fend for ourselves or if we were all alone in our battles. The Israelites were um, disillusioned. They didn't expect hardship or suffering. And as Christians, we can be fooled to think that a life of faith is without its challenges. As Christians, we can be fooled to think that. And when difficulties and pain and suffering comes our way, We can become disillusioned and cry out like the Israelites. Lord, I didn't know it would be like this. Lord, where are you? I'm following you, Jesus. And now this has happened. Why? In our fear, in our anxiety, our stress, we can act like we are abandoned. And in our battles, we have to fend for ourselves. But God's word tells us the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. In other words, God is still for you. God is with you. Trust that God will do whatever is necessary to get you through this. For the Israelites, what more proof of this did they need than the Lord's very presence? And so the angel of the Lord and the the pillar of fire came behind them and protected them and gave them light to walk in the darkness. The Lord wants you to live in freedom. Sometimes he'll change your circumstance. He'll remove the problem altogether so that you can be free. That's what he did with Pharaoh's army. But there are other times 
where God might not choose to change your circumstances, not remove the problem in order to instead change you in some way, to change your mind and your heart, how you perceive and handle the situation so that you can live in freedom despite your circumstances. Either way, trust that the Lord is for you and that the Lord is with you. Yesterday, a session retreat, we were asked the question, when are you at your best? And, um, you know, normally when I think of that answer, it's like, when I'm having a great day or when I'm really in my sweet spot using my gifts, but what came to me because I was so tired after a really long week with a lot of different things going on is I am at my best when I'm leaning on the Lord. The circumstances might not be their best. My schedule might not be their best, but I'm at my best when I'm leaning on the Lord. Trust that the Lord is for you and with you. Third, step out in faith and just keep going. God said, tell the Israelites to move forward. Move on. You don't have to be stuck. You don't have to feel trapped. Just step out in faith. When we find ourselves saying there's just no way, we need to step out in faith and trust that God will make a way. I don't see a solution. I don't see the possibilities. I don't see how I can move on. But God will make a way. After all that God did for the Israelites with the 10 plagues and the Passover, did they really think that God was going to abandon them now? And the same is true for us, folks. After all that Jesus Christ did for us, coming into this world, dwelling among us, sharing his life and his wisdom with us, dying for us on the cross, rising again. After doing all that, do you really think God's going to abandon you now? No. No. Whatever has a hold on you, threatening to pull you back into old ways of life and thinking, like Pharaoh approaching you from behind, whatever battles you are facing right now, like the Egyptians ready to attack the Israelites, whatever obstacles you may face, like the giant sea that is looming before you, whatever is holding you in bondage, making you feel trapped in life, stuck, unable to freely live in that life that God intends for you. Trust that God will make a way for you to move forward. Step out and experience that freedom again in a new way. A number of you are aware that we have a good friend going through a battle right now. Greg Dill is an elder of the church. He sings here in the worship band on many Sundays. On Thursday afternoon, he fell from his roof or from the ladder while he was cleaning the gutters and was unresponsive when the paramedics came, and he is still in critical condition. Many gathered here on Friday night to pray for him, and we all need to keep praying for him and his whole family, his wife Beth and the three kids, Emma and Ethan and Evan, who usually does our screens on Sunday morning. Greg is so engaged in his faith, such a vibrant faith, it just doesn't make any sense. It can feel to us like Pharaoh is advancing again, like the evil one is doing whatever he can to stop that bright light in our church from shining out and continuing to make an impact that he's been having in worship and in teaching and leading Bible studies and on session and with his family. It can feel like Greg and his family are in the middle of a huge battle where they are way outnumbered and the odds are stacked against them. It can feel like there is just no way. So what do we do with all of this? The same thing that God told the Israelites to do. Don't be afraid. Stand firm. Trust that God is for Greg and Beth and with the whole family and that God that, that, that the battle is the Lord's. And trust that God will, that, and then we just need to step out in faith, knowing that somehow God will part the waters. Trust that God will make a way. It says at the end of our reading today, and when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him. What are we waiting for? 
Let's start trusting now. God has shown himself to be faithful throughout the Bible, but also in our own lives as well. And he is always faithful. And he'll be faithful in Greg's battle and he'll be faithful in your battle. Whatever it is, whatever the outcome, he is for you and he is with you. Trust in God's will. Trust in God's provision. Trust in God's goodness. Trust in God's wisdom. Trust in God's love. And watch God show up in unexpected ways. And wait for the waters to part again. Alleluia. Amen.